there, glad you dropped in. Today I was going to talk about salvages. I'm not going to uh, make anything or give you any patterns. We're just going to discuss them, how you can save them, why you should save them, and what can be done with them. Salvages are basically, um, the word is self-explanatory, the self-edges of the fabric. If you remember from school, if you took home that many years ago, they called it different things since. Your fabric, the cross, the width of your fabric has a selvage on the edge, on both edges. Usually one edge has a white selvage or a light colored and the other has the pattern right to the very edge. The white edge and the, and the regular edge are the ones we're saving and we tend to cut them off when we start to sew because they um, are thicker, they're thicker than our fabric and it is hard when you're making um, uh, the seams, they, they get stiff and also they're a different weight so they might shrink or not shrink at a different rate than your actual cotton. Now I've only been saving cotton salvages, I don't know about others. Um, the batik fabrics I haven't used yet. They do have a salvage, but they're not distinct. And so they would be good for color, uh, to add color that you don't have any distinct markings on them for anything else. And um, I must try them one day. I just haven't happened to try them yet. I thought of it when I was looking at all my 100% cotton fabric here. Um, now there's a lot of information on the salvages. And when you take home your fabric, if you're someone who always washes the fabric before you use it, then I would say leave the selvage on until after you wash it so you won't have any fraying or it'll, it'll keep a nice sturdy edge when it comes out of the wash and dryer. The selvage has lots of information and different selvages have different things printed on them. For example, this one. It um, says 100% cotton. It's by Deborah Edwards of Northcott, and then it has the Northcott web address, and three little dots, and the little dots are different colors. Each color represents one of the color of threads that are in the fabric. So you probably have known this for a long time, that when you buy your fabric and you see the dots, you know if you buy fabric of each of those colors, it'll it'll um, blend well with it because it has that color in it. The um, second one is, I thought this was very pretty and it's a Robert Kaufman and it also has the, um, it has the uh, designer's name and Holiday Flourish is the line and um, where it was made in Japan. This one even has the screen print number. Save these if you're making a project and you might run out of fabric and want to order some more or go back and search for some more, if you have the actual information, it will be easier to find fabric that is the same. So you can use them, but, and if you go to use them, um, maybe jot down the information somewhere else, just make sure you have it in case you want to buy some more fabric. Um, and of course, usually it's white and I don't know why, Sometimes the color goes right to the edge. This was the selvage and it has the information on it, which is generally the side that's white. Um, and of course, all the dots or each one represents a thread that's uh, in that fabric. And this was very um, figured, so there's lots of threads. But um, um, some of them, if you might want to use just the white part because you don't want a distraction. Some of them you might want to use the printing or just the dots or, or the um, color keys. It depends. And you once you start to play with them, it's like Lego, once you start playing with it, you put them together and, and uh, mix and match and change things around, it, it's really fun. Um, I happened to get this lately, I really like it. I didn't notice that it had this on it, but it's one of my favorites. The name of the line is Bees and Blooms so their color chart is not in dots, but in little bumblebees. So that's cute. Plus it also has a nice saying on it, which I'll be sure that I use it for a, um, a, a piece that includes the entire saying. And that is work like a bee, but take time to savor the honey. 
So you might get sayings on them, they vary. This is a very similar one. It's the same line, Bees and Blooms. Um, I must have already used the, the key code. Uh, just a different color. And the opposite side, this side has your salvage with your information. The opposite side of this one, I did use it, I remember, and it's just plain navy to the bottom. So um, you're, you're gonna see fabric right to the edge on one side, the design on one side, and the printing on the other. A lot of the salvages have like a frayed edge, and that's cute, it adds a little bit of change to your, to your um, item, whatever you're making. For example, this one has a salvage. This one yellow, that would be easier to see. There's salvage on that. And it just adds a little texture and a little change to whatever you're putting together. Now again, the two sides, this one has just the plain white on one side and the design right to the bottom on the other side. And it's nice to have both. Now you might see, I don't know that you can, a little row of pinpoints all the way down here. Of course, that's not going to hurt because you're sawing your pieces so closely together that nothing's going to rip or get caught or anything. That's where the fabric was pinned to the loom when it was being made. So it's it's of no consequence to us. I could see the little pinpoints right below the color key. And this one is the different colored stars. This is a really pretty one. I used it in the very bottom there, so the little stars. And I think I, I think that might be it too, the plain navy here. So it can, it can be, and here I have it showing the stars and the navy. So one, one salvage gives you several different designs and different colors. So you don't need a lot to start. I just started, um, well, less than a year ago and um, I'm well underway. I know I could make a good size project if I had the ambition and I'm going to because I really enjoy working with them. The first one I tried out, when you go to sew them, I use um, muslin as a backing. Because they're kind of flimsy and you're using tiny pieces, it's nice to have something to as a base for it. The muslin is thinner than 100% cotton, so it's not making it too thick for when you have your seams to sew together. Uh, whoops. I just decided to try a six inch square one, and I, wanted, I knew why I wanted on the diagonal. So I start at the bottom, sew the small piece in the bottom and just work from there up. And you just adjust how much width you want according to the pattern. Now, if you're really lucky, and of course somebody gave me this because I don't tend to cut them this wide, somebody will give you a nice wide piece. And that's what I use for about the very center. Um, I had been cutting them off. Somebody said to me, save your salvages. So I did, instead of tossing them. But I thought they meant just the salvages. And so, of course, mine were very, very narrow. I used them for ribbon type, for um, uh, tying, tying things, or even on a gift for a, a, somebody who was a sewer. They would know what they are. But when I realized that uh, we're going to work with them, I thought, okay, I will have to save a little more. And I did learn. This is one of my early ones. And look how narrow that is. But I can save this end and it has a frayed edge and it's nice and bright right above the white. So don't toss them. We can we can adjust and work with them. But as opposed to one somebody gave me, and this I really about three quarters of an inch to an inch above the white is a is a good amount and it gives you lots to work with. If you see you want to adjust it wider, narrower, you do that and, and sew it on the width you want to. And you're not really wasting. I used to think, well, I don't want to, I cut it right on the white so I wouldn't waste fabric because of the price of the fabric. However, if you give yourself about an inch more, you're really not wasting because you are using it in a project and you're, it's like having, um, having more fabric that you didn't realize you had. Um, this one, as I say, I did on the diagonal. Now it's six inch block. However, remember when you're going diagonally, so when you're in about the center, you're gonna need about nine inches. So uh, if you're doing a six inch block, don't be cutting your, your, um, your salvages at six inches, just hold them up to the block, sew it on. As, as a matter of fact, hold it up to the block 
if it's quite wide or quite long, sew it on and clip it just past, and then you have the rest of it for another time, for another place. I wouldn't, I don't cut them as I go, or some of them I actually have them cut ahead of time, so you work with it, but it's easier to have a little bit longer and then cut it off. You need tiny pieces for each end, so even the tiny pieces are going to be used. Now this is my latest one that I didn't even realize. I need a cushion at Christmas time. And I don't know if I just didn't look at it or forgot about it, but it's a really cute one. And it's called Sheltering Snowman. And it's who it's by, Henry Glass. And the color chart is Little Mittens. So I think the manufacturers or the, the designers or whoever decides on what the what goes on your salvage um are catching on that people are using them and they're making them match the fabric because my little snowman on this fabric had mittens on. And sometimes with children, uh, uh, I saw one with small trains on the bottom and each color was a different little train, train engine, I'm sorry. So you, you have such a variety. I did one sideways, just, I mean, you know, just straight across diagonal, uh, just straight, horizontal. And um, I was going to make a mug rug, but I think I changed mind and I'm going to make a zipper bag. It would be good and sturdy and different. So I'm going to use the zipper bag to put my needles and scissors and stuff in. So it would um, certainly match my sewing session occasion. I thought I'd try another angle. As I say, they're, they're almost addictive, almost as much as chocolate when you get going. And this one I cut out. Um, I measure what size I, I would like to make a, a placemat and I cut out the the height of the placemat and then I cut a, a little less than a third of the width and decided I would go at a little bit of an angle. I, I the, the plain horizontal is it's cute and it's different but I really like when they're diagonal. For some reason, it really shows it up. But I didn't want to go, I couldn't go completely diagonal because this is not a square. So I stared in the corner and I, I drew a couple of 45 degree inch lines and just started with um, the little one on the bottom and then kept working up. And as I say, remember, when you get near the center, no matter what the shape is, it's generally going to be longer. Well, your horizontal wouldn't, but, but the center of a, an angled one, it's going to be longer than the than ones on the end. And uh, this is a really cute one. The, uh, the pattern had, or the, yeah, the um, fabric had uh, flowers all over it. And so this key chart, and look how many there are, has little flowers, one for each color that's included in the, uh, in the fabric. And um, I saw another one here. Oh yeah, the little um, little ladybugs. So they can mix and match. I put a couple of wide ones in. I put a dark one in and it really makes it stand out. So I tend to think I might put navy for the rest of the placemat, but I'll think about it. Um, you might want to pick and choose and not have everyone um, with a saying or wording on it because sometimes it's nice just to break the break the it with plain color. The plain navy just seems to draw your eye and then you look up and down from there. So you don't need uh, wording on each and every one or the, the color codes, but they are cute when you splatter them in and out there. So I thought that was a, a cute idea. I love doing it and it does get addictive. When I sat down, I thought, well, I'll try this little one and then within a not too long, I had these three different ones made and I certainly plan to do more. Um, so save your salvages. And if you have, go look at your fabric now. If you've washed your fabric or if you tend not to wash it before you use it, look at the sides and remember there's gonna be salvage on each side. One has your um, white with your, or not necessarily white, but quite often with the printing and, and the key code while the other side has the design right down to the to the edge. And so it's nice to have both sides. So thanks for dropping in. See you again.